well anyways the whole point of this video is to uh have a look at my tweed champ uh clone and to tackle again the problem of the very high voltages that i see in this amp i already fixed something and changed the main tap on the power transformer a long time ago but that did not have much influence as we will see in this video i will plug in a number of different 5y3 rectifier tubes this one originally came with the amp and it looks like a brand new tube also notice that it's a bit taller than the other vintage tubes you might say it's a new production tube but it's not it's uh east german russian military surplus stock that is sold by a tube amp doctor that's how they get started but as you will see switching this one out with uh, some older uh, vintage rectifiers does st uh, change the voltage of the, uh, the, uh, the, the does change the main voltage considerably then we will switch out some more power tubes i've got a number of them here and we will see how the voltage and the bias behaves and we will discover that biasing a champ is uh, easier if you just start plugging in uh, various tubes until you reach some voltages that sound good and that feel good. This is the rectifier that was originally in the amp. It's a tube amp doctor tube selected, but as you can see, it's got some Russian printing on it. And it is made has been made was made first month of 1973 so it's old military stock here's the base for the russian uh, russian rectified tube okay this is a setup i have detached the speaker i've connected a, a load resistor to the output <clears throat> i'm measuring the bias and i'm also connected the scope to see the signal that's coming out of the amp, it's at full volume. So I can sort of monitor what's going on. Let me just check and put it here. You can see that my bias, <coughs> the bias voltage on the, on the cathode is almost 24 volts, which is close to the maximum rating for the capacitor that's in there. But I've got 800 ohms in there. Uh, as a bias resistor. I'll be strumming the guitar. You can see that on the scope and <coughs> see how the bias voltage behaves. When I strum very lightly, nothing's really going on. But when...
now gives me a B plus that is about 15 volts lower than before. Before you had like 400. So, but the bias is now at 14 volts. But uh, as the plate voltage has gone down considerably, this might give us another dissipation rating. So I'll, I'll recalculate. So let's see uh, what's cooking. Three, three hundred and eighty-five, eighty-six on the first node. Spreadsheet. That's it. Copy down. So now we're only at 10.5 watts. So at this point we might revert to a different uh, cathode resistor and just go back to the 470 with this old GE 5Y3. But it really makes a difference. These are the hypothetical values uh, even when I had the Haltron in and I played it at full volume and strummed it really hard, I saw cathode voltages of 32 volts. And that would mean it's dissipating like the 14 watts, the maximum when split being played hard. Um, but this is interesting. So originally I had like 407, 410 volts on the first node and just by switching out um, rectifier tubes we got it down to 385 even though the fender schematic uh, indicates 340 volts so we're still a bit over like say 10%. Here's a Belgian 5Y3 GT Adzam rectifier okay let's check the high voltage 382 and bias 23.7 hmm. but the odds on too Well, B plus is down to 360. Bias 2290. Version 2.
General Electric, 370, 372, 373, and 22 and a half. Three hundred and eighty-nine, three ninety, eighty-eight, and sixteen volts and a half on the cathode. Maybe it's just that this very old tube has a depleted cathode. Okay, that's it for today. Uh, in the next video we will look at the screen resistor. It's already in place here. And I will also put the, the amp back to stock. Um, the cathode bias resistor will go back to 470. There it is. And we will have a listen with the proper bypass cap installed on the first stage as well. And selected tubes. We will listen how it sounds. That's for next week.